over to the three of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, great to be here face to face. I'm sure you'll hear that a lot today. Um, so I've had the real privilege of working on various projects uh, with Rally, uh, with different organisations, um, charities um, and local authorities on really important projects that deliver real social value, um, get people active um, and create real sustainable uh, community groups. Um, so we're here today to talk about um, the benefits of free bike schemes. Um, and uh, I just want to touch on that word enabler. Uh, I heard that a lot in the first uh, two, two presentations. And actually, that is a, is a great word and a little story. So when we started the partnership with Essex Council and the Active Wellbeing Society, um, I went down firsthand and uh, witnessed um, what it's like to uh, be part of the free bike scheme giveaways, see what it's like for the you know, the volunteers who are there um, giving the bikes away, preparing the bikes, learning new skills, um, and really creating a, a sense of community. Um, and I met a guy called Max, and um, it was really interesting to meet him and find out a little bit more about him. So uh, Max um, was, I guess, lacking in confidence. Um, he uh, was someone that was, he was a really nice guy, but he just needed that little push to get him where he needed to be. Um, at the point I met him, he didn't have a job and he was volunteering with the scheme. And uh, fast forward six months and Max now uh, is a, a trainer. So he now teaches people to ride. Um, he's also a volunteer for the scheme. Um, and eventually he'll have a full-time job, um, both being a mechanic, so building the bikes, um, preparing them, giving them away, um, but also teaching people to ride as well. So passing on the skills that he's learned uh, to new people, which is, which is just amazing. Um, so, don't really need an introduction to Rally. Hopefully, you all know the Rally brand. Um, 130 years in the UK. Um, but what's really interesting and the really nice link between what we're doing here with the Free Bike Scheme and the Rally brand is actually how it started. Um, so, in 1888, this guy here, Frank Bowden, um, he actually was given a bit of an ultimatum. Uh, get active or your life expectancy uh, is looking pretty grim. Uh, so he did. Uh, he got a bike, he bought a bike from the little bike shop on Rally Street in Nottingham and he recovered. Amazing. Um, and he loved it that much that uh, he started the Rally Bike Company. Um, so it's really fundamental to who we are and what we did. You know, Rally in its heyday employed 15,000 people across Nottingham. Um, so it's a, it's a world renowned brand um, and really the fundamentals are key to the to the project that we've got here. Um, so these are the picture of the bikes that we give away. Um, there's various projects across the UK. Um, I know Julian's here to talk about um, the Active Essex project, uh, Essex Pedal Power, uh, and Michelle uh, from the Active Wellbeing Society will talk more in detail. Um, but really, there was just a couple of points. Um, We've got a huge opportunity here to, to get people active. And for me personally, it's about informing but not being preachy and finding out how people can be active and how it can fit into their lives. We've seen definitely uh, through the various schemes that I've been involved with that people when they cycle or walk or vice versa are generally more active, you know, willing to make those short trips by foot or by bike, whether it's to the shop or wherever. Um, so generally the knock-on effects are huge. Um, and, you know, we touch on it there, you know, 60% of the population uh, don't cycle, if ever, and 40%, 47% uh, own or have access to a bike. But I think what's really interesting and interesting about this scheme um, is the amount of people, uh, adults and children, that either don't know how to ride a bike uh, or don't have access to bikes. And through our work with the Bikeability Trust, you know, it's been really eye-opening as to the amount of children uh, that don't have access to a bike. So hopefully, um, what you're gonna hear today is a little snippet about how we're trying to change that. So like I said, I won't ramble on too long um, because the best bit is yet to come. Um, but it's, for us, it's really great to see children and adults learning to ride. Um, it's great to see the community groups that are springing up across these various projects, across Essex, London, Birmingham, Scotland, volunteers and people coming together um, and also the amazing 
points about reducing congestion, improving air quality, all linked to um, health and well-being. So I'm just going to hand over to Michelle yes. from the Active Wellbeing. Yeah, so thanks, Ed. Um, and he's framed it really nicely because Julian and I are, are here today with Ed to talk about a real cross-sector relationship and partnership that has been evolving over a number of years and around the learning of how we support people. And going back to Dr. Bird's points, it's about connection, it's about a sense of place, but it's about providing an opportunity and removing barriers to participation for so many people. Um, so we're sharing the lessons from Essex and Birmingham, but, but obviously there's some fantastic work happening across the country. Just a little bit about us, um, and I'll try and whiz through it. We're a community benefit society. We spun out of Birmingham City Council's Wellbeing Society back in 2017. And, and in the Wellbeing Service, sorry, Birmingham City Council's Wellbeing Service, we were a team that were very much focused on providing physical activity and leisure opportunities for people in the most deprived parts of the city. So very much the design of our interventions and programmes were based on Marmot's proportionate universalism. So free at the point of access for all, but very much targeted at those with the greatest needs. So we work in, in various areas around active travel, social prescribing. We work really closely with primary care networks and work around co-design with GPs and the wider system. So active travel is really key to us, but working with partners who really are connecting with people in communities, in primary care is absolutely essential. And again, um, I think that the point that Dr. Bird touched upon, for us, we're really passionate about activity. It's a thread that runs through everything we do, but it is about connecting people to place, not just providing the opportunity to be active. Um, just about the growth of the Big Birmingham Bikes programme, we were involved with partners like Sustrans and Cycling UK um, a number of years ago, 2013, on a six-month pilot to increase grassroots cycling and it was a really successful pilot that included a, a bike lending scheme alongside infrastructure, schools engagement and the opportunity to learn to ride. I think one of our learning points from that though was about the, the loan element. For us it was fantastic to see behaviour change but what really mattered to us was that people had the opportunity to sustain that behaviour change. So in 2015 when Birmingham Cycle Revolution kicked in um, there was a really big push from transport colleagues, public health colleagues and ourselves to say, actually, we should be putting in a free bikes element. People should have the opportunity to own a bike as part of this. Um, it's about the democratisation of, of transport and infrastructure, so opportunity for all. And in 2015, we launched the Big Bikes Scheme, making 3,000 bikes um, available. And that really was, I think Ed would say, for us, the start of the journey with Rally, um, procuring a huge number of bikes. But then what does that mean, translating that into to, to public use and community benefit? Again, I won't go through all of these because we've touched upon in a number of the, the, the presentations, inequalities, deprivation, the impact that has on physical activity levels. But for us, it was about not widening the gap, but actually giving people opportunities. It was about creating a movement. And you'll see throughout Ed's presentation, Julian's and mine, the orange bike. Um, and it is about creating visibility and movement and opportunity to be part. We call it part of a tribe. And we've had that so much in, in our qualitative feedback from people that they feel that they're part of a movement now in the city. Why a free bike? Um, again, we've touched upon it in all the presentations, but we're seeing more and more in our interventions and programmes, people can't afford some of the essentials to live and be active. Tampons, sports bras, comfortable shoes, actually never mind the substantial you know, equipment like a bike. So we have to own that, we have to own that and say, what do we do about it? How do we support people? Yes, we can invest in infrastructure, but if those with the greatest need can't access a bike, then we're really, really missing a trick and actually we're widening the gap. Um, we've delivered 19, 000, uh, cycling training to 19,000 school children through bikeability and the Big Birmingham Bikes work. And we see an increasing number of children that just don't have access to a bike. And for us, that's a fundamental right. We get to go out and buy our children bikes. When the pandemic hit, people put their, their hand in the pocket, games, equipment, sports, sports equipment. People don't have that choice. And for us in Birmingham and, and more broadly of our partners, we think that should be a right. Um, and we, we ask for a pledge, and we, you know, we, we, we will not impose that, but we really hope that people commit to riding their bike regularly. And I know Julian's going to talk about the data and, and some of the GPS and some of the, the tracking data that we use to be able to actually monitor the impact of, of the bike's usage. 
But again, it's very much for us about peer support, creating a community of people that look like me. So the opportunity to work with partners in the city like Sahili, working with other community cycling clubs is absolutely key. And it's coming back time and again in our feedback. It's really important that people see people like me riding bikes. So not just the like for clad, but a whole new movement of people they can relate to. I've included um, some of our statistics just to show. To date, we've given away over 7,000 bikes and more recently, um, nearly 300 bikes on prescription. Going back to my original point, and I'll touch upon it in a minute, it is absolutely essential to work with GPs, primary care, the system, to reach people with long-term conditions and who have the greatest gains to make from cycling. Um, again, we're going to be talking about, Julian's going to be talking about the, the route into skills, employment, um, the, the education that, that the bike can provide. So we've got some fantastic findings about the impact, not only on the health benefits, but skills and employment. And, and for us, it's really key in terms of the demographics that we are reaching the people um, that, that we set out to reach, so those living in the most deprived parts of the city and people from BAME backgrounds as well. So just really briefly, the evolution into bikes on prescription. Um, working with our local delivery pilot, Sport England funded programme, we've been able to work with GPs and primary care networks to do a really important piece of work in the pandemic. And I think Dr Bird talked about the pressure on primary care around mental health. And we're certainly seeing that with social prescribing link workers. We're a provider across 11 primary, primary care networks. So we cover over 60 practices. And we are increasingly seeing people who are presenting, who are isolated with mental health problems, but actually people who've been on the receiving end of probably the most powerful public health message any of us are gonna see in our lifetime, which is stay home, save lives for two years. And now we're kind of doing that step-by-step -step reintroduction back into society, saying, come back out, get on a bike, join the walking group. So, so actually that system's working, working in, in places and spaces people trust, working with primary care is absolutely key because we need to build trust, we need to build relationships, we need to actually make people feel comfortable and confident to come back out and be active, and that's absolutely key. So going back to the point that, that, that was presented before, we, GPs are seeing more and more people presenting with mental health and traditional models they won't work, they, they can't work. We have to reduce pressure on primary care and we have to find new ways of working. And things like bikes on prescription and cycling initiatives are absolutely key. I'm not gonna read that out, but that's just one of the quotes from um, a clinical director we're working with who's so passionate about the impact it's made, not just on the primary care network, but on the practice staff themselves, the visibility of having the bike in practice. And we're building some really good relationships with primary care and GPs. Um, so just around the bikes on prescri prescription specifically, alongside the fitness, for us, again, I think what's really stood out, and I think the, the really powerful stats for us is about the impact it's had on making friends, feeling less lonely, the actual stat around feeling more connected to your community, especially after the pandemic, is absolutely critical. And I think that's the point about the cycling groups. Yes, people can own a bike, and it's absolutely important that they can, but our model is about learn to ride, connect to others, join part of, part of a movement, be part of a group. So I think for us, as, as much as we like to see that people are getting fitter, they're getting stronger, you know, we're tackling things like deconditioning that was mentioned before, it's really important to us that it's about discovering new places and meeting new people. So I've touched upon the bikes movement. I'm going to hand over to, to Julian, but yeah, we are really, really passionate about the free bikes movement. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is a brilliant opportunity for me, actually, to break out of the transport world. Um, and focus on health and the relationship between uh, transport and health. Um, but I actually want to start off with um, the social determinants because this project really is about reducing health inequalities and increasing phys physical activity, and I think they're both really important. So we were really influenced by Marmot and really trying to understand more about place and the physical environment and where the transport system can make an impact and how it can enable and really how important it is. So when we were initially influenced by big Birmingham bikes and tools um, in a very urban setting in an urban Birmingham um, with, with the free bike scheme, um, we needed to adapt it and change it in Essex so that it could really respond to a very different local population, um, which in our initial target area is coastal and rural. Um, so with very different challenges. 
And we were kind of looking about how we could get funding to, to implement this. And, and we, we found our opportunity in our local enterprise partnership, the Southeast Local Enterprise Partnership. So at the height of the, pack, at the, height of the pandemic, when people were isolated and not moving around, there was an opportunity to bid for um, the Get Building Fund um, to increase and enhance connectivity. And so we were able to put together a bid that improved physical infrastructure and connectivity, so it answered a transport question, and it started to play into the social determinants, so providing better access to jobs and opportunities and connections, and we were sort of quite cheeky, so we said, well, actually, look, if you're going to fund this new infrastructure route, bear in mind the people at the far end of the route, in Jaywick, Sands and Essex, are in the poorest community in England. So it's no point in actually just providing the infrastructure. We need to give them a bike as well. And they bought it. So we were really pleasantly surprised. We did a bit of lobbying and we managed to land that idea that we want to increase physical activity. If you want to bring health and transport together, for some people, the issue is affordability, and therefore you need to break down that barrier. So if you want to deal with all of those issues around connections, um, enabling, you need to be able to bring these agendas together. So it was quite neat in that we were able to look at the social determinants and health inequalities, and also then start to think about um, increasing physical activity. So in this particular community, there are a number of challenges. Um, so one of our wards in the pilot area in, in Clacton, in Jaywick, in Essex, um, is the poorest ward in England. So a lot of people there really experiencing wicked problems and multiple uh, challenges, which from a council point of view actually creates huge demands. So we were looking at linked up solutions and bringing together people in place. So we knew that there was poor health and well-being, lower life expectancy, high social care demand, and then a number of these other challenges, these place-based challenges around poor housing, um, a very tourism and seasonal dependent economy where people have very limited travel horizons, where they actually didn't travel very far and move very much. Um, issues around employment and skills and local economy, and very limited connectivity. So it was really important that we start to think about how we can address the, those issues in a, sort of, in a much more um, joined up way. Um, and we came up with a vision, and we developed the concepts from the Big Birmingham Bike, um, and we developed our own scheme, working with local uh, communities and local agencies, and we came up with the name with Essex Pedal Power. And the power is about the, empower and the empowering of the local community. It's about giving them um, more freedom, more access, and giving them that opportunity to be more connected, not just to um, other places where they might get a job or a better job or training, but also connected to the local community and giving, giving people something they could do individually and socially as well. So um, having learned a lot from Big Birmingham Bikes, I think we've um, evolved the, the scheme in Essex and we would like to roll it out to a much, much wider area because we think it um, brings huge benefits. Um, but yeah, it's really important to recognise that each type of um, scheme where you, where you have uh, bike loans to give away or free bikes is very context dependent and you need to think about who lives there and what are their challenges um, and, and then again the opportunities um, to, to make improvements to their lives and we noticed that you know almost half of the households in this area don't have a car there are bus services but they're very expensive not everyone can afford them and they don't always run at the right time so if you did have a job and you wanted to try and um, move up to a better paid job, you wouldn't necessarily find it easy to say get to the station to get a train to a higher paid job or more skills or access more opportunities uh, because of the limitations of the local bus services. So actually giving people a bike and enhancing the infrastructure just opens up their horizons to lots more opportunities. So from a transport perspective, this is actually the opposite of what we would normally do. Normally, we're trying to get people to travel less or, 
change modes, but in actual fact, through active travel, we're actually getting people to, to start to travel more. And so the way we achieve this is through a wider systems change. And we talked about, Jamie talked about systems change and how important it is that we come together and, and collaborate. And my experience has been that we have found um, people, like-minded people with the same sort of passion and ambition. It's not an industry. This isn't about us all, you know, carving out little roles and jobs for ourselves um, and advancing our organisations. This is a genuine collaboration where we bring together very innovatively in a, in a council, we're bringing together the economic development team and my sustainable transport team, as well as all the, all the different partners of the community and voluntary sector and, and the NHS, um, and the local district council really coming together to support this project and understand you know, how we can work, at, work in an agile way, um, make decisions really quickly so that we can respond to local needs and really listen to the, to the volunteers and the participants about how we can support them and help them and build that community and that connectedness. So we've got a number of outcomes. Um, around cycling participation. Um, we got the funding from the LEP, so as you would expect, there's this big uh, employability focus, and that comes back to the social determinants. Um, but really, yeah, so important is about increasing physical activity and realizing all those um, physical mental health benefits that the participants um, can then enjoy and embark upon. So, at an individual level, I think, for me, this is very much about giving people the tools, enabling them to build their confidence. Um, and it is, it's a journey. Not everyone is able to um, participate in the bike training and then move straight into cycling on a, on a regular basis. There are, there are some sort of initial steps and activities that we undertake so that we can help build up support and confidence. Um, and some people just start to volunteer at the... Um, at the bike kitchen or in the community in the community hub area and they don't necessarily start the training um, and the cycling straight away but then there, there can be a nice easy pathway into that so um, what have we done so far so so far we've given 200 by over 200 bikes away now and we've got a pipeline of bike giveaways um, throughout the year um, we're seeing very quick results actually really impressed by people directly coming in, uh, into employment as a result of the program. Um, we're building up a community. Um, we're using um, good communications and marketing and local information and events so that people can participate um, and get more involved in pedal power. And just a quick kind of overview of, of some of the key statistics. So in addition to working with Edit Rally, we also work with a company called C-Sense, based in Northern Ireland, and they actually provide the GPS tracker. So every bike has a GPS tracker, so we're able to collect a range of statistics um, and information. We know, we know about the demographics of all the users, and we have a user survey as well. Um, so, we, so we've got a kind of good idea. Generally speaking, the initial participants in the program are, are, are people on low incomes, poor white British people in, in Essex. Um, in terms of uh, the, the information that we gather, we can get information on um, the number of bike trips, the number of the hours of activity, the distance traveled, the number of trips in a week, the CO2 save. And this is really important for us because um, and from a transport perspective, we're a highways authority, so we can collect lots of data on um, where the bikes are going and where we might want to focus future investment and maintenance. And with C-Sense, we're about to do a new project where we can collect other sorts of data about how people react on their bikes, if they're swerving, and there are lots of opportunities to collect data to improve safety and refine the scheme as we develop it um, going forward. Um, so, yeah, this data is really useful, lots of different metrics for us to evaluate and understand um, how successful the scheme is, um, so we can then think about future iterations, how we roll it out to, to the rest of Essex. And for me, I'd like to see it um, all across the country, particularly in all the levelling up areas and areas of deprivation, because we must recognise that uh, not everyone can afford a bike. Um, 
So that's enough of me speaking. Actually, we've got a video we'd like to play so you can get a, a sense of it yourself. To sum up, what having a bike and learning to cycle has been for me, the one word I would use is freedom. Before I started cycling, I wasn't moving a lot. My weight was going up, blood sugars were rising. I was fast becoming a serious diabetic and my health was deteriorating. I'm very, very comfortable now. The muscles are stronger with all the work I put into my cycling. Um, I'm not just having fun, but I'm actually increasing my health levels, my energy level. The biggest effect is that it has affected, impacted on my mental well-being. And November when I got the bike, it was just like, well, I truly deserve this for what I've done. I'm very, very grateful for the fact that these opportunities came to me. Anybody can do it and everybody can and they should. And I want people to see the impact it has had on me and then suddenly, oh, there's that lady who cycles, there she goes again, you know. It's made me move and do the things I want to do. I'm not the person that usually gets anything or any help. It's just amazing that they care that much and they've done it. My weight is reducing. Got a lot of new friends from the course. And to see how they're not just giving a push bike, you're taught in a safe environment on a playground. There's a massive group of people that didn't know one another before that now do. Unbelievable, I think, is the word. Elated. It feels really good to be given that bike.